Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can flip a lawn tractor for a profit. Now I got this Craftsman lawn tractor on a trade. If you watched my previous previous video uh, a couple videos ago on an old Campbell Hosfeld air compressor that I flipped, I actually didn't sell it. I traded it for this lawn tractor. Um, this tractor runs, cuts, drives, and everything. The only real discrepancy is that the front wheel there is flat. So I went out and got a tire kit or tube actually at Tractor Supply. I think it was like 12 bucks. So I'm going to pop that in there and that's going to fix that problem. And then what we're going to do, and I'm going to try to make this video quick, but also show you all the steps that I do. What we're going to do is we're going to take the seat off. I'm gonna take the hood off, and then I'm gonna sand the whole thing down. What we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with that paint color because I don't know why they went with the two tone, but I don't really like it. We're gonna stick with one color, so we're gonna go with that um, metallic gray, and then uh, that's gonna be on the back here. And I'm gonna sand down, and I'm gonna paint everything that is black black again. So it's gonna look really sharp. I'm also gonna sharpen the blades in the process. And I'm gonna take the wheels off, clean the tires up, gonna sand down and repaint the wheels, probably get them black. And then I'm also gonna drop the deck. I'm gonna sand that down and paint it. It's basically a cosmetic restoration is all I'm gonna do here. Uh, I did get lucky also at Tractor Supply. I got a can of Rust-Oleum and the paint color looks pretty close to the silver, but it's actually gonna make it pop a little bit. So when I tape the uh, the stickers off and paint it with this new gray, it's not gonna look that, it's not gonna be that big of a contrast on the sticker when I tape that off is what I'm trying to say. So um, first step is I'm gonna remove the deck and I'm gonna remove the seat and I'm gonna start taking um, these guys off, the little rubber stoppers, and then I'm just gonna clean everything. And then from there we'll tape it off uh, and then I'm going to do the uh, tube. I'll show you guys how to put a tube in a wheel real quickly. So, um, yeah, let's get started. All right, the seat's off. Uh, there was just a bolt here, a bolt there. Um, I don't know if I ever showed you guys this little trick, but I have a lot of these magnetic cups. And so what you do is you just put the bolts that you took out of the seat and you're gonna put them back on the seat when you reassemble it and just stick it on the bottom and then you won't lose those nuts and bolts. All right, next thing is the uh, hood and there are four bolts, one, two, and three, four. And I used a three eight socket to get those out and then this thing should come, oh, this bracket already swung down. I'll just pop that off and the hood should come right off. All right, the uh, hood is off, as I said, and uh, then we're just gonna take these little um, pads off, foot pads, whatever you wanna call them. Just grab a screwdriver and then just start prying them off. Um, they're old rubber. Uh, they could be pretty dry, um, and so you wanna be a little bit careful that you don't break them. So don't go all ham on these things. Just take your time, bend underneath, pry them up, and that way we can clean it we can uh, paint and then we'll just use some Gorilla Glue or Super Glue and we'll glue them back down. Okay, so those little uh, foot guards, whatever you want to call them, those little pads are off. Next step is just cleaning, guys. Um, I like to clean everything before I really start working on it. And this thing isn't super dirty, but it's pretty dirty. And especially if you're going to paint, you have to paint on a clean surface. So, um, like in here, you can tell that's been sitting outside for a while. And uh, I gotta clean the fuel tank off. I have to clean around the battery cover. And uh, actually, thankfully, this battery's in really good shape. I'm not sure how old it is. Um, I'm not sure what the date stamp is on it, but held the charge really well. Um, so I just gotta clean everything up. Once everything's cleaned up, and then we can start taping off our stickers, and then we can start painting. All right, guys. So um, what I just did is I used my buzz sander from Harbor Freight's Drill Master. I'm pretty sure this was less than $15. It might have been 12 or something like that. Um, they sell the little sanding sheets in packs of, I don't know, six or eight or 10 or something. But it was really great. I basically just buzzed down um, a bunch of the surface rust off of here. You can see it got down a bare metal right here. And uh, over here on this 
rear piece here. I got some of that sanded down and then I just um, sprayed some degreaser on it. I'm gonna wipe it off and then we're ready to tape. Um, but I just wanted to assert the value of a, a cheap tool like this. Every time I'm in Harbor Freight, if I see a good deal or a good coupon on something like this, even if I don't need it right now, I typically get it because I may have a use for it just like now. All right, guys, we are ready to paint. Everything has been sanded, wiped down. Actually, no, we're ready to tape, I should say. Um, and that's what I wanted to get at right now. Um, <clears throat> I use blue painter's tape. Guess where I got it? Harbor Freight. Uh, you got the thin one, which is I'm going to use up here because uh, this is gonna stay black, and of course this is gonna stay gray, so I'm gonna use the thin one to tape that off. And then you got the fat tape. This stuff is so, so great, because you can lay down a strip of the fat tape along the edge right here, and don't have to worry about overspraying the black onto the gray, or the gray onto the black, because you have a good thick layer. And if you have to do two of them, even better, and it uh, uses a lot less time than using a whole bunch of this, or having to put up you know, tape paper on there and all that uh, nonsense. So, um, what you gotta figure out what you wanna do is if you want to do the black first or the gray first. Um, what I'm gonna do is the black first. So I'm gonna tape off all of the gray, including up here. And then um, I'm going to, yeah, tape off over here. And I'm gonna tape off over here because this is gonna be black. Anything that's gonna be black. Uh, we're gonna have to tape off and so or anything that is not gonna be black is we're gonna tape off even the little stickers like up here and then right over here that has engage and stop all that stuff attachment clutch I'm just gonna do my best to get uh, some tape on it and use a razor knife and cut around to make it look halfway decent so it doesn't pop out at you we've got to tape over these stickers because you're not gonna paint over stickers so that is time-consuming but it um, is certainly worth it when the thing looks really great when you're done. So uh, I'll come back with the tractor all taped off and then after that, we'll go to paint. All right, here we are. So I have everything taped off uh, to shoot this with black paint. Uh, one thing I wanted to relay to everybody is don't worry about overspray. And what I mean by that is don't worry about spraying a little bit onto like here or onto here because the gray is gonna come second and you're just gonna paint right over it, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, the reason taping so is so important is to create nice, good lines um, to start with. And so like even like right here, you can see that I didn't get the exact corner covered. That's okay. I'm gonna be taping over this black once it's dry, and I'm going to paint that. So, um, and again, this is just a flip a lawnmower. You're not painting a car, you're not doing anything super expensive. So all I do is I use my $1 can of paint, spray paint from Home Depot, and you just start painting. Um, I just do nice smooth strokes, that's what she said, and start covering everything up. And you can see it really quickly starts making everything look a whole lot better. So, I'm gonna do the whole thing and then we're gonna let it dry and then we will repeat process for the gray. All right, I just finished shooting the tractor with the black paint. I think that it already is making a really, really cool difference. Um, so it was very, very simple. Uh, you just like, as you can see, as long as you have good taped off edges, you can kind of just shoot um, paint with confidence. So um, I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna push it inside. We're gonna rip this off and we're gonna tape it for gray. Okay, so this is probably going to look pretty funny, but I'm doing this for a reason. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about when I said overspray. So, um, I taped off right here to paint the black here, and you notice that the black spray paint came all the way over here. I did the paint this outside, and there was a bit of a wind gust uh, when I painted it, so that could be part of the reason. But, what I want to say is don't be afraid to go crazy with the painter's tape. Um, especially with the um, thicker roll because that will stretch a long way. I think it costs like five bucks at Harbor Freight. So if you're gonna use a whole roll on something like this and you're gonna make a good profit, it's totally worth it. So like I said, um, don't be afraid to go crazy. I taped off just about everything I think and I also used some cardboard to block some spots off. Um, but areas in like here, I'm gonna be spraying pretty close, pretty close. I shouldn't get anything up here. 
uh, but I got the rest of everything else blocked off and taped off and we should be ready for gray paint. All right guys, so here's that bad wheel, uh, bad tire that I had mentioned I was going to put a tube in. I got the tube right here. Uh, I do have a heater running in here, that's why it's a little bit noisy. But um, first thing I'm gonna do is just release the rest of the air pressure that is in this tire um, so that I can cut the stem off and then break the bead and uh, we can stuff the tube in. So um, yeah, you just press on the um, air inlet there, let the pressure out and then you can start breaking the bead. All right guys, so I got the tire uh, off the bead here. Basically all I did was I took the big pry bar here. These are from Harbor Freight. Um, they're very cheap. Don't buy a pry bar anywhere, anywhere else. I should do a video on pry bars. Do not spend a lot of money on these. You can get really good ones at Harbor Freight. But all I did was I pried um, part of the bead off and then I used another pry bar, stuck it in the middle and then I just started working my way around and pretty easily it came off. And then the other side, I just bashed it with a hammer and it came right apart. So, what we're looking at here is it's nice and free. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this valve stem off and we're gonna stuff the tube in. All right, the valve stem popped out really easily. All I did was tug on it with a pair of needle nose pliers right at the end here. And then I just snipped it with uh, these cutters and uh, I just yanked it right out. So that is super, super easy. All right, here's the tube. Um, and so really the only thing you gotta think about is where the stem's gonna go, and clearly it's gonna go at 12 o'clock here. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna lift the, up the tire, and I'm gonna start stuffing from this side, and then go around, and then it's gonna drop down, and then I'll just have to fish through with a pair of needle nose pliers right in here. As you can see, I'll just fish through needle nose pliers, I'll stick it through there, and then uh, I'll inflate it so it stays in place, and then we're just gonna beat the tire back over the bead, and we'll be good to go. All right, so the tube's in, and I got the uh, tire over the uh, edge of the rim on both sides. Little trick there, use a little bit of a uh, silicone lubricant around the edge there, and then I just kind of kneeled on it and used a uh, pry bar, as I showed you before, and just kind of like reverse process for taking it off. You're gonna apply pressure and um, stick it on. And now I'm just gonna pump it up full of air, and we're gonna put it back on the track, which is looking really good. So all right, so the uh, wheel and tire are both looking really good. It's nice and seated. Um, one quick thing, guys. Anything with ball bearings or really anything spinning that has a grease point, you want to make sure you're greasing it. So you can see I have a grease point right there. I put my grease gun on there, and I squirted in there until it came through in the center of the hub here. Also, there was a grease point right here on the steering arm or steering knuckle, whatever you want to call it on these things. And so I threw some grease in there until it, until it started pushing out the top. You want to make sure these things are properly greased. All right, guys, it is looking real, real good. Uh, all that I have left is I want to clean up the wheels, the actual rims, and I think I'm gonna shoot them with black paint. Uh, and then I need to clean up the seat a little bit. Um, just gonna take some, I don't even know, I might even just put spray paint on a rag and rub it in or something like that. Um, I, you know, I'm not really even sure. Um, and, what else was I gonna do? Oh, I was gonna pull off the uh, shroud here and I was gonna hit that with paint and then I was gonna clear up the deck down there. I'm actually not gonna drop the deck off because I think it's unnecessary. I'm just gonna clean up the outside edge. I'm gonna shoot it with paint. It's not necessary for something that gets so dirty to be painted just to get dirty again. So, but I think that it uh, is looking pretty good. It's not perfect, but it is an old, old mower. So it wasn't intended to look perfect, but I think, uh, but for what we did, I think it looks pretty sharp. So, uh, yeah, that's all for now. I will uh, review the finished product once I get everything taken care of. All right, everybody, and here is the finished product. Um, the only things that I did after uh, the last clip that I shot, I uh, shot some paint on the uh, rims to uh, match the rest of the body. I thought that would look pretty sharp. I shined up the tires a little bit, uh, just a couple little touch-up pieces. Oh uh, yeah, this isn't a very good angle, but I did paint the uh, chute cover there, and that's pretty much it. I did put a little oil additive in the oil, a little uh, Lucas oil additive, just for safe measure, but this thing fires right up, runs great, uh, and everything is completely operational. So let's see, in total, I spent $5 in paint, 
I used some tape. And uh, that is pretty much it. We just disassembled, we cleaned, we painted, I made sure everything was running and operating properly. Oh, and I greased the points on it. But other than that, it was good to go. Another really good example of how you can flip something with just a little bit of elbow grease, a little time and effort, not really any money. Uh, if it looks good, people are gonna want it. And I think this tractor looks really, really nice. So it's ready for its next owner, ready for a lot of years, a good service. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this tractor. Let me know what you think about the videos. Uh, if there's something I can do better, if there's something I can do different, please let me know. I'd love to work on it. So have a great day.